Hi folks, welcome back to round two of angle sum and difference formulas and double angle identities. Here's our formula sheet that you should probably sort of have in hand uh, throughout this process or on a screen. Today we're going to look at doing some proofs at using the double angle formulas to find uh, missing ratios and at simplifying some trig functions. This first question has the very vague instruction of simplify, like write it in a prettier form, um, which is not that nice. But this function can be written in, in a lot nicer way. Sine of x plus 2, pi over 2 is annoying. It's got a phase shift in it. Um, if we think about our formulas, it's really sine of one thing plus another, which is sine cos plus cos sine. So apparently I can write this thing as sine x cos pi over 2 plus cos x sine pi over 2. Now really each of these things are being multiplied together. The sine of x you cannot evaluate, right, because it's got a variable in it, so it's just going to stay as sine x. The cosine of pi over 2, pi over 2 is an angle here. What is the cosine of pi over 2? Well, at pi over 2 we're at these coordinates, 0, 1 on the unit circle. The cosine of pi over 2 is 0, and if you're not sure, throw it into your calculator and see what it says. Plus cos x times the sine of pi over 2. Well, the sine of pi over 2 is 1, the y value there. So what are we going to get? Sine x times 0 is just 0. 1 times cos x is just cos x. Oh my gosh, a simpler way of saying this function is just cos x. Now let's see, does that make any sense at all? We know that sine x looks like this. Okay, this would be pi over 2 and pi. If I took that function and moved it pi over 2 to the left, like an x plus pi over 2 tells us to do, it's actually going to look now like this. And it would go back here. And you folks know that graph. You know that that is cosine. So we know this geometrically already, but now we can show it algebraically as well, um, which may be more helpful than having to generate a really good graph. The next question is kind of a little logic puzzle at finding different trig ratios given that you know one of them. And you might say, oh, well, why don't we just find the angle and then we can plug and chug in our calculator. But actually, you often don't need to know the angle to be able to work with angles. You need to know the ratio of sides. Like the pitch of the roof on my house is uh, 10 over 12. It rises 10 for every 12 that it goes over. Nobody really cares about the angle that that makes. If you're trying to decide about the distribution of lumber or shingles or whatever, the angle is really not important. It's the idea that it goes up 10 for every 12 it goes over. So if you know that the sine is 4 over 5 on something, well then you know that it goes up 4 for every 5 on the hypotenuse. Now it's tricky here because this angle is in the second quadrant. So I am going to mention that over here. We're in this quadrant for sure and we know about ASTC. So it makes sense that sine would be positive here. You can do the first step that I'm going to do here with a triangle itself, but I kind of like to do it with the Pythagorean identity um, because it keeps it algebraic, and I kind of like that. Some people don't. They'd rather see it. But if you want to know cosine and you know sine, here's an equation that does that. The gag of single variable, or of, of algebra really, is if you know all but one unknown, you can hopefully find the last unknown. So sine squared plus cos squared equals 1. In other words, the sine of theta all squared plus the cosine of theta all squared is going to be equal to 1. And we know that the sine of this angle is 4 fifths. And this should help us nail down what the cosine is. Okay. Now all I have to do is rearrange and get cosine on its own. So 4 squared is 16, 5 squared is 25, equals cos theta all squared. 
going to rewrite 1 as 25 over 25 because I know I'm going to do a little bit of subtraction here. So cos of theta all squared, or you can just write it as cos squared theta. That would be more normal. It's 9 over 25. I'm going to square root now to figure out what cosine is. And the thing to remember is that in an equation, when you square root, you need a plus or minus, okay? because it might have been positive or negative. And square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 25 is 5. So cosine theta might be positive or negative 3 fifths. But we know what quadrant we're in. We're in this quadrant right here, second quadrant. But we're in Q2, where cosine is, is negative. Okay, It's positive in quadrants 1 and 4, but cosine's negative over here. So... We know for sure cos theta is negative 3 fifths. That was kind of a lot of work. Um, but what we might take away from this is if you know sine theta and want cosine theta, use the Pythagorean identity, sine squared plus cos squared equals 1. Because it's got regular angles of theta in it, and it's just got those two things. Same as if you wanted to know uh, if you knew cosine and wanted sine, you could use this. Once we have cos theta, we can probably find the rest of them. And it turns out we could also find cos 2 theta without even doing part A, because cos 2 theta has these three definitions. It can be written like this. It can be written like this. And it can be written like this. I'm telling you, in this particular case, it makes the most sense to use the last of those because this is for sure true. It doesn't require you to have done part A correctly. So for us, it's going to be 1 minus 2 times the sine of theta all squared. So sine is 4 fifths. The angle, we will never know what the angle is, or we don't need to find it. And chances are you'll just get rounding errors if you do find it. And this is one of the reasons that so much trig could be done before the era of calculators, is that we really cared more about the ratio of sides than we did about the actual angle itself. 25 minus 32 gives us negative 7 25ths. Okay. Uh, we're asked for sine of 2 theta. And again, we can head to the formula sheet. And it will tell us that it's this. Well, that's easy. We were told sine theta is 4 fifths in the start of the question. We found cos theta is negative 3 fifths. And we just follow it through. So that's 2 over 1. So we get 2 times 4 times negative 3 is negative 24 all over 25. And you can just follow the algebra here. There's no square rooting, so you don't have to worry about plus or minuses. If it ends up negative, well, then sine is negative wherever double that angle is. The last one is tan 2 theta. You might notice on your sheet that there's a tan 2 theta identity. Um, but an easier way to do it, so to use the tan 2 theta identity, you have to know tan theta, which take a little bit of work. It's, it's not that bad. I think it would just be negative 4 over 3. The easiest way here to find tan 2 theta is this, though. We know that tan is just sine over cosine. And sine 2 theta we just found is negative 24 over 25. Cosine we just found in green there is negative 7 over 25. And to divide fractions, you just multiply and flip times negative 25 over 7. And notice these 25s are going to cancel out, so you'll get exactly positive 24 over 7, because a negative times a negative makes a positive. So we find all these ratios without ever really figuring out what theta is, um, and that saves us from some rounding errors. If curiosity overwhelms you, then theta was about 126.9 degrees to start with, 
though not exactly. Okay, lastly, we're going to do a proof here. Um, so, I'm going to set up my columns. One of the pieces of low-lying fruit here is that we could get this all in terms of sine and cosine, so maybe I'll do that on the right. But there's still a really big issue. On the left, there are different angles than there are on the right, and that's hard to reconcile. But I think what should get your spidey senses tingling is the fact that there is a sine 2x. Listen, it says sine 2x here, and there's an identity for sine 2x. In your formula, there's formula sheet, there's this. Sine 2x is 2 sine x cos x. This can't be a coincidence. It's there probably so that you should use it. Okay, and the rest I'll do in blue here. And there's a cos 2x as well. And so that's a trickier one. Cos 2x has three forms. Cos 2x could be cos squared x minus sine squared x. In a proof, that first one is very rarely useful. Um, because you often want to get down to a single trig ratio. There's this one, and then there's this one. Now, any of these will get you there in the end. Um, but you probably want the bottom to turn into something that's as simple as possible. So we've already got that plus 1 from the bottom. Which of these three forms is going to get us to a simplest form first? I think it's the middle one. So I'm going to use that one and hopefully have it work out pretty slick for me. But I'll go back and show you what you could do if you chose, say, the last one. Okay, so that gives us 2 sine x cos x. You can't divide out until you have everything cleaned up and factored if needed. On the bottom, it's just 2 cos squared x. There's really nothing to factor. And here, the 2s will divide out. And one of those coses will divide out. We'll get sine x equals co uh, over cos x, rather. So the left side equals the right side, and we're done. Just as an aside, if you decided to use a different technique, so I'll try and make a little space here. Maybe I'll do it over here, on the far left. You still would have 2 sine x cos x. If on the bottom you had decided to go 1 minus 2 sine squared x, plus 1. Well, what would you have gotten? You'd get still on the top 2 sine x cos x. Uh, on the bottom you would have 2 minus 2 sine squared x. Okay, And there's factorization that can happen there on the bottom. So because you can factor you probably would. And you'd have 1 minus sine squared x here. So the sine squareds could or the 2's rather could cancel out and then the 1 minus sine squared x would make me think of the Pythagorean identity that sine squared x plus cos squared x equals 1 meaning that 1 minus, cos, 1 minus sine squared x equals cos squared x which means that on the bottom I could sub in and end up at that cos squared x and these would divide out Sorry, just the squared would divide out, and we get sine x over cos x. Okay. Same as I got in blue, more steps, um, because I had to use that Pythagorean identity later on, because I just chose a more cumbersome method. Not a wrong method, just kind of a slower one. And you'll probably have something similar if you end up using uh, the first version of the cos 2x. But if you see a sine 2x or a cos 2x in a proof, chances are you need to head to your formula sheet, and look for opportunities to exploit those formulas. That brings us to the practice stuff. Uh, so I'm saying page 306, number 11. And in number 11, you'll probably need to find cosine before you find sine 2 theta, just like the example that was on this video. Uh, these ones over here are from yesterday. 
And then on page 314, uh, there are some, in 10, it asks you to like show that it works for 30 degrees or something. Just prove them, just do the proofs. And then uh, 11a, 12, and 15b. There are some for fun questions if you're interested. And um, good luck with the material, folks. I hope this has been helpful, and take care.